الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله الذي كتب الآثار ونسخ الآجال القلوب عنده مفضية والسر عنده علانية الحلال ما أحلل والحرام ما حرم والدين ما شرع والأمر ما قضى وهو الله الرؤوف الرحيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سجدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما مثل الحياة الدنيا كماء أنزلناه من السماء فاختلط به نبات الأرض مما يأكل الناس والأنعام حتى إذا أخذت الأرض زخرفها وزينت وظن أهلها أنهم قادرون عليها أتاها أمرنا ليلا أو نهارا فجعلناها حصيدا كأن لم تغن بالأمس كذلك نفصل الآيات لقوم يتفكرون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما لي وللدنيا إلا كراكب استظل تحت شجرة ثم راح فتركها أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم I begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. I beg for His mercy, His compassion, His uh, infinite blessings. And I beg Allah, the Almighty, to guide all of us on the path which is most beloved to He. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless each and every single one of us who have been present here today to perform the duty of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I give salutations upon the chosen one Muhammad, his companions, his family members, and those who follow their footsteps until the day of judgment. And I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, it's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, that He has enabled us, He has gathered us here. It's good to be back with the community, with the people, the love, the dua, the supplication of those individuals that have made this trip of mine very successful, easy, and uh, in a very comfort way. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant blessings to all of those who have remembered and who have made dua and who have supplicated. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them blessings in this life and in the life of hereafter, bring prosperity in their children and in the family. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. I would like to focus today's talk on a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is very needed in our life today. Because as we are progressing in a worldly life, as we are progressing in materials of this world, there are certain things that we, we happen to forget. And that is the things that we are striving for is it worth it or not? And if it's worth it, is my striving for it is correct or not? Because it's not the only thing that you need to go and there is an, there is an achievement or there is something that you need to achieve in your life and you strive for it. But you need to make sure that the path that you have chosen, an individual has selected, elected for him or herself, that path, would that path lead him towards that success or not? This is why amal, action, it is recommended in sharia. Ah. But at the same time, if the action is done on a wrong way, in a very crudal situation, in a very bad manner, then that action is no longer accepted in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Giving the example, the individual, he has the zeal to come and pray, which is a great zeal, which is a great inspiration inside the individual. But the same individual, when he leaves his work to come to the masjid, on his way to the masjid, he does an act which is not suitable. Maybe he breaks the signal light. He is hurrying for salah, 
And he says, well, you know, I'm going for a good deed. So if I break a signal light, it's all good because I'm going for prayers. He comes to the masjid, he double parts. Why? Because he has come to pray, which is a good thing. He comes and he floods the bathroom. Floods the bathroom. Why? Because he has come to pray. And at the same time when he makes wudu, instead of washing himself, he washes the floor as well. And then he comes in the masjid. And when he comes inside the masjid, there are two people sitting together. He moves both of them and stands right in the middle. Why? Because I am here to pray. Now all of that action that he is doing to pray, but the actions that he or she has committed in the past, this prayer will not give him a single reward. This prayer will not elevate his status. This prayer will not get him closer to Allah the Almighty. This prayer will not give him any benefit in his or her life. So as we have been told to monitor our actions and to do them in the best of our ability, we need to make sure that while we are doing that action or we are in the process of doing that action, we are not harming anyone. We're not doing difficulties upon anyone. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a sahabi radiallahu anhu, Sahal ibn Sa'ad al-Sa'idi radiallahu anhu mentions that I was sitting with the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. Ja'a rajulun ila nabiyy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqala ya Rasulullah, dulluni ala amalin. That a person came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I need an advice from you. And that advice is, Direct me to an action which makes me the beloved of Allah and makes me the beloved of people. Ahabbani Allah wa ahabbani an nas. Now, of course, in the mentality of individuals, all of that, the example that I gave, what was that for? He was coming for prayer for what? To make Allah happy. To become the beloved of Allah. But in the process, he made so many actions which brought the wrath of Allah instead of the pleasure of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Sahabi radiallahu anhu came to the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam and he said, O Prophet of Allah, I would like you to tell me an action, direct me to an action which makes me the beloved of Allah and as well as people love me. Now a person was to put this question in front, that you become the beloved of Allah and people also love you, what can be that action? Because in the pleasure of people, many people do many things. In the pleasure of people, many people do many things. A person indulges in haram, just to please his family, just to please his loved ones. But at the same time, those loved ones, they go against him. So where is that pleasure? Because pleasure is something, love is something that cannot be compensated by material things. There is a difference between hub and ghard. Someone loves you because you have money. He doesn't love you, he loves your money. Sheikh Sa'di, he was a, a great saint. So he was invited at a, at a, at a marriage ceremony. So as he was saying, just regular clothing, he went inside, people say, well, where, have, where are you coming? He says, well, I'm invited. Doesn't look like it, we don't invite poor people to our weddings. So go out. He went out, he put a nice clothing on, put perfume on, looked so his best of ability, and then he came back to the wedding. When he came back to the wedding, people are welcoming him. Come on. You know, mashallah, you have come, we are thankful of you, so on and so forth. So he sat down. At the time of dinner, instead of eating, he started feeding his clothes. Instead of eating, he started feeding his clothes. So someone asked him, have you gone mad? Have you gone mad? Instead of eating food, you are feeding your clothes. He says, because the respect is given to the clothes, not me. That's why I'm feeding the clothes, not myself. So in our mentality is that if I am rich, people will like me. If I am poor, no one will like me. 
If I drive a certain, a certain car, if I live in a certain community, if I have this much amount, if I make this much a year, then I am a very high profile individual and people will respect me, they will honor me, they will, and whatever that people are doing to you, they're not doing to you because of you, they're using to you because of your money. So your money is being respected, not you. So the Sahabi radiallahu anhu said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet of Allah, direct me to an action which will make me the beloved of Allah and which will make me the beloved of people. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Uzhad fi dunya yuhibbuk Allah, wazhad fi ma inda nas yuhibbuk nas The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, have zuhud in dunya, Allah will love you. And show zuhud from, from what people have. People will love you. Now what is zuhud? Let's translate that. Let's translate that. Abu Zaid, rahimahullah, he's one of the scholars, he said, I was doing the tawaf of Baytullah. Faja'a shabun min al A youngster, a young lad came to me who has come from the area of Balkh. And he had approached me. Now, of course, when you live in a time and we are connected with spirituality, then indeed everyone feels the feeling. So, from a small child to an old age individual, they are full of wisdom. Today, individuals they, 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 they look for spirituality in things. So what a speaker is giving a talk and you are looking inside the talk that which statement of his can give me spirituality. But we fail to understand that the spirituality is not from what he is saying. Spirituality develops from myself inside. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu says, لو أن قلوبنا طهرت ما شبعنا من كلام ربنا. If our hearts were pure and clean, we will never get fed up with the recitation of Quran. We will never go as make a single day pass in our life except that we will be reciting the Quran if our hearts were pure. So something that we are looking outside, it's not something which is outside. It's something that we need to look for it inside ourselves. So the lack of spirituality is not found in, in the organization. The lack of spirituality is found within you. So the spirituality is not coming. I'm not feeling it. Why? Because there is something wrong inside me. You know, it's like a person who grabs a Pentium 3 and he sits down to download a movie. Now those of you who are familiar with the computer, Pentium 3 is back in, you know, late 80s and 90s, right? Now we have gone beyond that, i and whatnot. So now he purchases the highest speed of internet that is available in the market, and he hooks the Ethernet code to his Pentium 3, and he says, the internet is slow. Because I am not getting the amount of speed to download this into my computer. So he's blaming the internet company, whereas the problem exists inside him. And that is his computer. So this is the same scenario in our life, that we are talking about other people. That this does not exist, or spirituality does not exist. But the problem is not outside, it's within us. This is where we started off. That if our hearts were pure, we will never get fed up with the recitation of Quran. So anyhow, coming back to the translation of Zuhud. So Abu Zaid said, this individual approached me. And he said to me, What is the explanation or the definition of Zuhud? So Abu Zaid said, I replied to him, 
إذا وجدنا أكلنا وإذا فقدنا صبرنا. When we have, we enjoy. When we don't have, we have patience, and that's zuhud. When we have, we enjoy. When we don't have, we have patience, and that's zuhud. So this individual says, "Hakaza kilabu balkhin indana." The explanation that you are doing, this explanation or the definition of zuhud is found in the dogs of the area of Balkh. So Abu Zayd said, well, what is he talking about? He is connecting us with the dogs of Balkh. He said, I'm sorry to say that, but the reality of zuhud is, وَإِذَا وَجَدْنَا آثَرْنَا وَإِذَا فَقَدْنَا صَبَرْنَا When we have, we give it to those who don't have. When we have, this is why the word zuhud, a lot of times it's, it's understood in a very wrong way. The general understanding of zuhud is, is to detach your world, uh, is to detach yourself from the worldly benefits. Not to have money, not to have the worldly possession. That's the general understanding that people have for zuhud. But the real understanding of zuhud is, not to possess, it's not to possess wealth. The real understanding of zuhud is that the, you are not possessed by the world. You are not possessed by the world. So your morning and evening is just caring about what you can have in your, in your bank account or what you can have with you. So he said that zuhud is something that when you have, this is why a zahid is a person who has all the ability to spend whatever he has, but he prefers not to spend on himself, rather spend on others. He prefers not to spend on himself, rather he spends on other people, other individuals. Because the Muslims have lived in an era where an enjoyment and a happiness of a believer was to put food in the plate of another individual. Where an enjoyment and a happiness of a believer was to help other individuals. That how can I I'm be able to help him and at the same time I'm feeling happy because he's been helped. Or his necessities have been fulfilled. But unfortunately, may Allah forgive me and all of us. Today a calamity befalls on an individual, we care less. And then a happiness comes upon an individual, we are starting to get jealous. So why is he having a new car and I'm not? Why is he so great in his life? Why he has received success? Why does he have this? And that's the problem that we get in our life and all the illnesses that we have, people have in their life is all connected with that. Because your emotions are connected, connected with your body. So when you're not happy with something, neither your food is becoming. You have a nice dish in front of you, but you're not happy inside that dish doesn't taste good. You're sick, you have the disease, no matter what type of food they have on t in front of you, it doesn't taste good. Why? Because you are sick inside, you, are, you, have, been, you have disease. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, detach yourself, detach yourself from the worldly things and Allah will love you. And how would you be able to detach yourself from the worldly things? You know they say, you can give without love, but you cannot love without giving. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. If you love someone, you have to spend on them. If you love the house of Allah, spend on it. The more you spend your wealth on things that are most beloved to you, the greater love Allah will give it in your heart. So if you are claiming, if an individual claims that I love this, or I love that, or I like, I like this. Today we like our life, so we are spending on that life. Today I, like my, I, I love my car, so that's why I'm spending. So I put nice wheels on them, lower it down, you know, exhaust, and everything else. Why? Because I love it, and a small scratch comes in, I make a whole fuss out of it. 
My whole day is ruined by because there's a tiny scratch which I have to look myself into a microscope to see it, but it hurts me in my heart because I have love for it. And that's the, that's the reality of love. That when, when something goes wrong, it hurts you inside. When something is not right, it hurts you inside. So as believers, there is a duty upon us. There are two duties. Number one, Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam said, لا تنظر إلى من هو أسفل منكم انظر إلى من أسفل منكم ولا تنظر إلى من هو فوقكم فهو أجدر أن لا تزدر نعمة الله عليكم أخذ البخاري في الصحيح The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when it comes to the matters of world, don't look at those who are above you, more affluent than you. They have more things than you. Don't look at those people. Rather look at those people who are not fortunate as you are, who don't have enough as you have, who are not able to do things as you are able to do things. In every aspect, in health, in wealth, in everything. Allah has given you money, an individual who doesn't have money, you thank Allah and you spend on it. At the same time, when it comes to the matters of, the, of, of deen, the Prophet ﷺ directed us that don't look at those who are doing less actions than you are. Rather look at those who are doing more actions. May Allah forgive me and all of us that today, when it comes to the matters of world, we are always looking for those who are more wealthier, who have more things in their life. How can I have this? How can I get this? How can I, I can possess this? But when it comes to the matter of deen, we always look at those who are less in action. So if I'm not coming daily for salah, or if I'm coming two days in salah for salah, I'm only looking at the person who only comes once a week. He's only coming for Jum'ah, at least I come two days a week. So if a person only comes for Eid, the person who comes for Jum'ah only says, oh, at least I'm coming for Jum'ah, he only comes for Eid. Brothers can come closer, inshallah. There are a lot of brothers that are coming in so they can find a space. Make sure that you keep the maintenance of the line and just, make, just be a little forward. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us a prescription that the most important thing that in your life is that how Allah can love you and how people can love you. And how to achieve those things. So first thing, uzhid fi dunya yuhibbuk Allah. Detach yourself from the things of this world. Allah will love you. And what is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Imam Muslim narrates the hadith in his sahih. إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ عَبْدًا When Allah loves an individual, نَادَاهُ Jibreel, He calls upon Jibreel and He says, I love that guy, so make sure you love him also. So the Jibreel descends in the sky and He makes an announcement that that individual is loved by Allah, so make sure everyone loves him. And those angels, they descend on the earth. And they spread this wording that that individual is loved by Allah. So if you want to be the beloved of Allah, you love him and Allah will love you. You love him and then Allah will love you. Because he is the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the vice versa. When a person is not loved by Allah, he tells Jibreel, I don't like this guy. Jibreel says to the angels and the angels descend. So wherever he goes, he is hated. Don't like you. This is the physical likes, not the likes and the unlikes on a Facebook account. Because that doesn't count. It has no emotions behind it. Love comes from emotions. Likes come from emotions. And how are you going to download emotions into a computer or a phone? You can't download emotions inside. So I like you, I press like button. I don't like you, I press unlike. So it's not going to work like this. No, it comes from emotions. So the most peop more people that are connected with the social or the media world, they lose emotions of these things. They don't know how to communicate with people. They don't know how to share things. They don't know how to talk. The whole purpose of social media is to facilitate communication. 
And what social media has done, it has broken the back of communication. So there's two people sitting, there's two people sitting, and they're talking to each other. So they send, and the one on the right sends them a text, and the left one sends them a text, and they are communicating with each other. Welcome to the 21st century. Welcome to the 21st century, because we live in a world where people are dumb and the phones are smart. We live in a world of dumb people and smartphones. So they have become smart, and the IQ of an average individual has, has decreased. Coming back to the point, the second thing Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whatever people possess, don't show any attachment to it. Don't show any attachment to it. There is a difference between attachment and praise. So you like someone's clothing, or you like someone who, who has a nice car, but you don't want to praise him. Why? He might think I'm liking his car, or he might think I want his car, so I'm not going to praise him. No. There is a way of expressing your love, and at the same time, not having the love in your heart of taking that thing away from him and having it and hogging it for yourself. So detachment from the things that people have does not mean that you don't praise. And unfortunately today, we are not finding ourselves in a way that we can praise people. Our words are very, very, uh, you know, they are very confined. We are very stingy with our statements. So we like the food, we don't want to praise him. Why? Because it might spoil him. Tomorrow if I come again, it's not going to be good. If the wife cooks the food and we like it, and you're eating it and you're enjoying it, and your wife is waiting for you to praise her, but you're not doing it so she finds the courage to ask, how is the food? It's okay. It's okay. What if you didn't have anything on the plate? Would that be okay also? No. This is the teachings of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because sharing the words of kindness can bring people together. If we are generous with our statements, if we cannot be generous with our wealth, but at least be generous with the statements, say positive things. Say positive things. In that way, people will connect. People will love each other. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, detach yourself from the things that people have. You praise them, but at the same time, you have no thing in your mind. You, have, you don't have an ayota of thing in your mind that he shouldn't have it and I should have it. No. Allah gave you, may Allah bring barakah in you. You got a nice car, mashallah, may Allah Azza. This is why when you have, when you see someone wearing a new clothing, when you see someone wearing a new clothing, someone purchased a new car, someone got a new house, someone got something new, there is a dua of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is a dua of Rasul Sallallahu to believe wa yukhlifullah. And that is, may you, may you use this to its end, and when it finishes, Allah give you something which is better than you have now. This is a dua. Look at the teachings of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When you see someone wearing nice clothing, to believe wa yukhlifullah. May Allah make it all. May Allah, may you use it to the best of the ability that this thing has. And when it finishes, may Allah bring something which is better than that you have. This is the dua Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught us. And in this dua, there is a lesson and there is a supplication. Because when you make dua for other individual, Allah appoints an angel to make dua for you. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a sahabi came, Ya Rasulullah, ayyu dua asma, which dua is most listened by Allah, most highly accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu sallam said, when you make dua for your brother behind his back, Allah appoints an angel to make dua for you. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us that spirit. May Allah make us among those 
who are living their life for a purpose to serve humanity and serve the deen of Allah, the Almighty. Aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa li sa'ali muslimina fastaghfiru, innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa a'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina min sayyati a'malina man yahdihillahu falamudillalah wa man yudhlil falantajidhalahu wa liyam murshida wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashadu anna sajidana wa maulana muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh salawatullahi alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wa sallama tasmiman kathiran kathira أما بعد فقد قال جل وعلا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام وصل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والصحابة المقربين خصوصا على خير البشر بعد الأنبياء بالتحقيق أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر بن الصديق صاحب رسول الله في الغار رضي الله عنه وعلى مزين المنبر والمحراب أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه وعلى كامل الحياء والإيمان أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه وعلى مظهر العجائب والغرائب أمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه وعلى ستة الباقة من العشر المبشرة وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله عليهم أجمعين I begin in the name of Allah, the Almighty. <coughs> Salutations upon the children of Muhammad, his companions, his family members, and those who follow their footsteps until the Day of Judgment. Respected brothers and sisters, it's a great blessing of Allah. Allah has blessed us with this blessed day of Jum'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the opportunity and the ability to take maximum benefit from this day. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَإِنَّ مِنْ سَيَّدِ أَيَّامِكُمْ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ The best day amongst the week is the day of Jum'ah. فَكْثِرُوا عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَوَاتِ So when you start selling, uh, sending salutations on the day of Jum'ah, increase your salutations upon me. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك من عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعبادك الصالحون ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك من عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعبادك الصالحون وأنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا وجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم اغفر لنا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما آمين يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين قول قول هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم أقم الصلاة